this video is in real time. I haven't even edited out any gaps in the drawing. So I really am drawing pretty much as briskly as I can. I set myself 15 minutes. I'll confess now I took an extra minute and a half because I didn't look up at my timer at the right time. But well, I needed that extra minute and a half. So there was no super obvious starting place in this for me. So I decided to start with this tower on the right hand side of the chapel. I think it's actually the chapel of one of the colleges at Sydney University. Now, when we draw, silhouettes are always important because they stand out more. The eye goes to them more easily and therefore we read the information that they tell us about detail and size and scale more easily. So it does mean anything that's in a silhouette form, we want to take care to get as correct as we can, particularly the proportions of the shape and the scale of the shapes to each other. So I try and reserve a little bit of space here for the tree, which is going to block most of the view of this tower. Trying to get a sense of how high to make these spires that sit on each of the corners. I probably made them a little high and a little wide, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Now the tops of the spires need to fit the proportion angles of all the horizontal lines on the tower. Since they line up on the horizontal in real life. And it's always slowest when we start a drawing because firstly we haven't kind of warmed up our hand-eye coordination and all of that, but also because we haven't established any sense of scale of proportion in what we're drawing. We're having to work all of those things out for the first time. The more of the drawing that's there when I draw something new, the more I've got to reference to help me work out where do I put this line, how wide do I make this, how high do I put this. Now there are these little bobbles, as I call them, that go around the outside of the spires. I think there were four rows of them. In a very quick sketch, we have to work out what architectural details we want to actually include. We haven't got time to do everything in detail or with great accuracy, but some details convey a greater sense of the overall characteristics of the building than others. And I find these little bobbles really do convey Gothic and Gothic revival very effectively. So I always try and put them in and to put the rows in. So I've tried to work out these spires so that their tops are all relative to each other in the right place. And now I need to go off to the right hand side of the tower. But again, needing to work out how much detail to put in the crenellations, I think they're called at the top. Also, I want to establish more of this tree. Just working out the width, it's always tempting to make it too wide. Well, for me, it is. But then I don't want to overcorrect. You can see me checking the angle with my pen, which is the way I do it, both when I draw from photos and when I draw from life. Getting this little corner base for the spire in position, adding just a hint of some of the detail that's on it. And these little lancet type decorations in between the spires. You can see me place the dot to help me work out not just the height of the spire, but also to center it over its base. Really important with spires or steeples to get them centered as sharply and accurately as we can. 
So there's just one more little lancet here. And again, when I'm looking at my reference with these, I'm trying to work out where the tops of them are relative to the ones I've already drawn. Now I've got some detail on this window that's not covered by the tree, and that's the windows with the louvers to allow the sounds, I presume, of the bells to escape the tower. I must admit, I thought I was going to draw these in with a little more care and detail, but I was very aware of the time. And as it turned out, these are pretty much the furthest details from the viewer. And so the, the fact that I left them with a fairly light, brisk touch doesn't hurt at all because of their position in the building. I'm just checking the angle of this bar across the side of the tower halfway down. And I'm aware there's foliage everywhere now. So I need to, again, reserve the space that I want the foliage to be in so I don't draw straight hard lines through it. There's a little sculpture that fits there. So I use my technique for drawing architectural sculptures. I've got a few videos on that if that's an area you're interested in. And again, I'm just doing the silhouette of the tree with a nice broken line that can suggest foliage, but will also give me adequate warning to not draw straight lines past there. And trying to establish now a little sense of foliage with some hatch marks where shadows are being cast within the canopy. It's a bit of a complex tree, this one. In the photo, I can see a lot of the trunk and the branches in various parts that are silhouetted against the tower behind. And for a moment, I'm trying to work out how I can kind of show that, but in the end, I realize I don't have time for that level of detail. So I've pretty much done the tower now and moving to this left hand, the body of the church is the obvious place to go now. Again, I need to work out where this foliage goes as it goes down the tree. And I've got these one, two, three, four, five buttresses to draw as well. After a moment's thought, I decided to put this lamppost in. I almost didn't, but these foreground elements can work really well because if we put something much closer to the viewer, then it creates a lot of depth between that place and whatever's behind. So it works to really increase the depth of plane of view of our scene. And I think it does that very well. Suddenly the tower felt much further in the background. I don't know whether you feel visually this lamppost has had that effect as well, which creates a wonderful sense of space. Now, this roof line is actually the only horizontal line I get to draw as a straight line in this part of the building because these buttresses really do run through the horizontal lines. You can see me just trying to make sure I get this angle as accurate as I can. And I do a dotted line because I don't exactly know where my buttresses are going to be. And so wherever they go, I can run them through those dots and dashes and it won't be a problem. When I started drawing them, what I didn't realize was that they had three step outs as they move from the top to the bottom. They had three places where they angled out to become wider as they went down towards the base of the building. And that really was a fairly tricky detail to try and capture because they step out on the horizontal and so therefore that stepping out top and bottom of each section where that happens has to line up with our perspective angles for the horizontal. And yet we also have to keep everything nice and vertical. It's always a compromise with how much detail we commit to in this sort of really quick drawing. I've not really had to draw buttresses like this in a quick drawing, quick freehand drawing before. So I didn't really have a go-to technique for doing it. I think 
by the time I got to the third step out, I'd kind of worked out my process. So if I have to do it again, I'll be laughing. As you can see, I've put the emphasis on getting the horizontal line correct by drawing it in earlier than most of the lines around it. And these last two don't work quite as well, but I've corrected them as best I can. I always feel it's best to put a right line, a correct line over the top of a wrong line. I feel in the end, in most cases, that looks less distracting. So now we have these windows. Now between these buttresses, which are meant to all be equally spaced, there's a window. And because the windows are darker, they're going to be the more obvious architectural elements. So if my buttresses aren't exactly evenly spaced, when I have something such as these windows, I can possibly space the windows equal to each other between the buttresses, which will draw the eye more than the space that's not correct between the buttresses. So it's, it's a way of making a visual adjustment to create the effect of accurate spacing along the side of the church. So again, now I have to work out where this hedge is down the bottom of the picture because I obviously need to stop the buttresses before they run into that and also this tree down the left hand side. I'm actually so absorbed in doing this, I'm not looking up at the clock very often. So just trying to get a bit more hatching happening with this central tree, which is still some way back. Before I started drawing, I did have a good look at all the trees and worked out exactly which ones were where and, and how close the closest ones were. So then I realized there are five little spires on the roof that line up with the buttresses. And I make the mistake, I think, of lining them up with the buttresses instead of doing what I just said to do with the windows, of lining them up evenly with each other because that would visually be a stronger cue for our brain to read. And so because I've lined them up with the buttresses, they're not as evenly spaced to each other as I would have liked. I also really wish I could just go back and take that fourth one a fraction higher. Is it the fourth or the third? Now I do these lines for the corners of the building at the end and then they're too narrow. I don't make the angles wide enough. And so in effect, I've narrowed the width of the church. And I have noticed that, that this is a mistake I've made quite a bit in recent drawings. And what that tells me is I have a natural tendency to make them too narrow. I must have some fear of making them too wide, making the building too wide. And so I'm preferring to err on the side of being narrow, but, but I do that too much. So next one of these I do, I'll pay particular attention there. So I'm really just now wanting to make up some, some paper time with this hatch in. Uh, there's a lot of foliage now, and I've done most of the work on the actual architecture. The last time I looked at the clock before the end, I, I really only have like a couple of minutes to go. Now I've switched pens now from a 0 0.3 millimeter pen to a 0 0.5. So I'm drawing these closest trees and the hedge down the front with a, with a thicker pen than I've used so far. So that makes it easier for me to get a darker, more attention grabbing, visually attention grabbing line. Because I want these closer things to stand out, to create some sense of separation with what's behind. And so a darker, stronger line and, and firmer, more definite hatching strokes is a good way to create this effect and also to create some darker shadow spaces, shade and shadow spaces as well. That also brings things forward because closer shade and shadow is darker than further ones. So we, we try and mimic the effect of distance in life in our line work.
so there's this hedge across the front and look I know that I'm probably on borrowed time at this point I'm going really quickly just trying to get as many marks on the paper as quickly as I can I use this darker pen just to go over the lamppost as well to just increase that effect of bringing it closer so now just doing the very base of the the hedge and with my marks I also try to create some sense of separation of difference between the foliage on the hedge there I am with the lamppost between the foliage on the hedge and the foliage on the trees that that somehow there's there's a difference here we're not looking at all the same thing with foliage it's good to try and do that because otherwise it can just become this tangle edges of trees are also good for trying to show that it's a different type of of tree as or bush as I do with that little shrub there on the lower right hand side so I'm really just going as fast as I can trying to respectably cover enough paper that the drawing will have a sense of being finished when I finish so it's just really this spot down in the bottom right corner there's a, a tree here that I haven't really done that's closer than the trees I have done so again I want to have a more emphatic darker heavier line and line work and then I'm done this is how my drawing finished up after 15 or really 16 and a half minutes of drawing I was happy enough with with how this looked but I did feel it was a bit a bit light on so I came back to it a few hours later after I did some other things and spent another 10 minutes so I'll just give you a, a 30 second sped up version of that 10 minutes so you can see how it finished up and if you'd like to have a go drawing this in 15 minutes or any length of time I've posted this reference photo on my community page so you can get a copy of it from there learning to draw directly in ink in a loose freehand style is a great skill and confidence to develop let me recommend it as a really good way to push our art development and improvement so time now for our sped up final drawing installment G'day I'm Stephen Travers I hope you found it helpful watching me draw in a little more detail just my process and perhaps even my thinking but whatever you're drawing however you're drawing it have fun I'll see you next time bye